The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max support the new Apple Log. But what is Log and why should we use it? Answers coming up. And also I've got some Apple Log LUTs to share with you as well. The simplest way to shoot a video with Apple Log is to go into camera settings, then formats, then toggle on Apple ProRes. And now you can choose which type of ProRes encoding that you want. So you're gonna select Log here. Open up the camera app in the regular video mode. And bear in mind that you can't shoot Apple Log in cinematic mode. And now you've got this option to switch ProRes Log on or off. So as soon as you switch it on, everything looks horrible, doesn't it? Washed out colorless. And the other downside is that it forces us to use ProRes, which is going to consume tons of space on your iPhone. However, we can actually get around that by using the Blackmagic camera app. So I'm going to show you how a bit later. Why would we want to do this ourselves? It seems like we're putting ourselves through a lot of hassle. What's the reward? Well, let me explain. Actually, let's let Apple explain. Apple has actually created a white paper for their Apple Log. A white paper is just basically a scientific document. I downloaded it and had a look and it's basically just two and a half pages, it's kind of equations and graphs and stuff that doesn't really make too much sense to me to be honest. But here's what they say in the introduction. The Apple Log profile is a scene referred encoding using a logarithmic curve and a wide color gamut. So there's actually two important things from that paragraph. First one is the word logarithmic, because that's where the log in Apple Log comes from. And the other one is wide color gamut. You might have actually heard of that phrase when you bought a TV. So basically a color gamut is just a range of colors. And obviously having a wide range of colors is better than having a narrow range of colors, isn't it? So they continue. The purpose of using this type of profile is best to preserve video data at capture time with minimal processing. Log captures are not intended for direct viewing, but rather as source clips used in post-production workflows where the desired rendering look and feel are applied during color grading. These captures are characterized by a transfer function and a color space. And when they say captures, they just mean video clips that you've captured. What is a color space? Well, it's a mathematical representation of a range of colors. And when you see things like Rec 709, Rec 2020, they're just names for different color spaces. So if you just record video normally with your iPhone, Dolby Vision switched off, the video that you get at the end is going to be Rec 709. And the video that you're watching right now is also Rec 709. But the important phrase here is not intended for direct viewing. So in other words, you're not supposed to shoot log and then just go and directly upload it to YouTube without doing anything to it. So the log format is for creators who want a more flexible color grading experience. So when you're watching a video on say Apple TV or on Netflix, what you're seeing is heavily treated video. So the video that you're watching is compressed, but also the color is worked on to give it a certain look. It's kind of like a cake that's been baked and it's already got all the icing on it and the decoration and it's all ready for consumption. So imagine if you bought that cake and then you tried to change the look of it to make it look different. It's going to be harder than if you bought, say, a half-baked cake, which doesn't have any icing or decoration on it. And now you've got more flexibility and it's just easier to add your own decoration. And going even further than that, you could just start with the bare ingredients of a cake. And that gives you even more flexibility. So when we're talking about log or Apple log and log profiles, it's kind of like a half finished cake. So when should we shoot using this Apple log? I mean, continuing the cake analogy, if you just want a cake that's all ready to go and you don't want to have to fuss about with it, don't use log. But if you want to add the icing yourself and you don't mind the extra time it's going to take, then shoot in log. Because if we're just using the normal video shooting mode, without log, we're gonna have the color, the look, basically it's baked in. The other thing is that iPhones and other smartphones add a lot of sharpening to the video, which can make your video look a little bit harsh and not particularly cinematic. Another thing that iPhones and other smartphones do is that they add this thing called dynamic tone mapping. And that means that you can never fully lock exposure. So by shooting in this Apple log, we remove all these problems and we get a neutral color palette. 
we get no extra sharpening, and we switch off this dynamic tone mapping. But it does mean that we're gonna to have to do more work ourselves. Black Magic Camera App is a new app for iPhone. And uh, you may have seen videos that I've already made about this app. So if we use it, then we've got more flexibility when it comes to capturing Apple Log. So we've got different types of ProRes to choose from, as well we can even shoot in H.264 and H.265 codecs. As well, we can use a display LUT, which shows what our log video is going to look like in the standard Rec. 709 color space. You can install a LUT and use it as a preview so that the clips that you get will still be in the washed out log. But when you're recording it, you'll see it in Rec. 709. And it just helps you to see what you're actually getting when you're recording. And they recently updated the app so you can now bake in the LUT. And this is more useful if you have these kind of more creative LUTs. Uh, which add an actual look to the video rather than just converting it to a standard color space. If you toggle on record LUT to clip, you'll now get a video clip with the LUT already added. So let me show you how to add a LUT to the Blackmagic app. Open settings, go down to LUTs and toggle it on. You can see I already have a LUT installed, which is called One LUT. And this is a LUT that gives you the look of an Arri Alexa camera. As well, Apple has made available their own LUT, which converts Apple Log to Rec. 709. So you can download this LUT from the Apple Developer website, or you can get it from my link, and it's probably maybe a bit quicker. Just check the description of this video for that link. But first, you need to download the LUT to your iPhone. And once you've done that in Blackmagic, tap the LUT selection and now load LUT. Navigate to where the LUT is, or the easiest way is just to search to find it and then open. Head back to camera, and now you can see what log looks like with the Apple Rec. 709 LUT applied. And if you wanna see what the Apple Log looks like, again, without the LUT, you can just toggle it off in the settings. So you can switch between any LUTs that you've installed and then preview or bake them in here. And this is another update to the app. They've added this setting for color space tag. So if you're using a LUT, then you need to change this tag to the color space of the LUT. If you don't, then your iPhone might display the video incorrectly. If you're using the Apple Log to Rec. 709 LUT, then you want to switch this to Rec. 709. So these LUTs can also be applied when you're editing your footage. And different editing software is gonna do it differently. But I'll just quickly show you how to do it in Premiere. Open up the color tab, open basic correction and then click on LUT. Choose browse, locate your LUT and then open it. The LUT is now added to the video. But this time, this is not a preview because when you export your video, it's gonna be added to the video and this is what it's gonna look like basically. So the guys at One LUT have created a LUT which emulates the look of an Arri Alexa. They've tested the iPhone 15 Pro alongside an Arri Alexa cinema camera to create a LUT that they say creates a comparable color response. So they've modeled their LUT to match Arri's official Alexa K1 S1 Rec. 709 LUT. So this is what it looks like compared to Apple's Rec. 709 LUT. If you'd like to use this LUT, I'm giving away five free copies of it to my members on Patreon. Uh, so just go to the post about Apple Log on Patreon, leave a comment saying that you would like to get hold of this LUT, and uh, the first five comments win. But if you're not a member on Patreon, you can still get 20% off. One LUT have given me a code, which I'm gonna place in the description of this video. Uh, this offer is only gonna last a few weeks, so get it while you can. We can also use more creative LUTs with our Apple Log footage. And these creative LUTs allow us to add a more distinctive color palette to our videos. And using log footage instead of the regular video, should mean that we get a more pleasing result. 
So you really don't have to use a lot when you're color grading your Apple log footage. I mean, most colorists don't actually use LUTs, only for reference uh, and also for filming as a preview. So this is just a clip I quickly got outside and I shot it with the native camera app. I didn't use Blackmagic or anything. So this is just in the Photos app on your iPhone. You can just open it up, tap Edit, go to Adjust. Now the very quickest way to do this is just to press the top one, which is Auto. And that's pretty close to what it looks like outside right now. But let's do it manually. So the first thing we want to add is we want to add contrast. So we go to Contrast and we just add a bit. About there, I would say. Now let's add some saturation. About there, I would say. Maybe a bit too much. Go back a bit. Yeah, that looks okay. We could also add a little bit of vibrancy. That's roughly the right sort of color. It's almost like adding a conversion lot. That's all you have to do, really. It's actually a little bit oversaturated there, you know, compared to reality. We could add some warmth, or we can even take some warmth away. You might say, oh, it's a bit gray, let's make it look warmer. Or you might say, well, that's just not realistic because the weather's gray, so we actually want, let's make it look even more gray. So that we're in the realms of creativity here now. We're, now we're deciding what we want our video to look like. If you just bring the shadows down a little bit, so we go negative. When you bring down the shadows, you add a little bit of contrast, but you do it by only darkening the darker areas. Uh, so we could just add a bit to about, just, I would say, there. And another thing, I think it's a little too bright um, for this shot. You can see that street lights are on, so in fact it's a little bit darker than this in reality. So we could also bring down the highlights and make it a bit more moody, a bit more nighttime-ish. So maybe just about... Minus 50. You could say that's done, really. That's probably enough. There's other things we can do. We can add a little vignette here. If we want. Very easy. If you wanted to give it a sort of slightly more HDR look, we could add a little bit of definition here. That looks pretty cool, I think. So, done. I hope that's demystified things a bit when you're using Apple Log. If you want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking, you can join us on Patreon where I've got a nine day course for beginners. I've got a nine day gimbal course. I've just started a new course, which is going to allow you to master any camera app. So Blackmagic or Filmic Pro, whatever you decide to use. All you need to understand is these six core settings. And then you can basically pick up any camera app and you'll be able to get great results with it. And hopefully see you there. Otherwise, happy filming.